Alfred, I thank God for this opportunity. Uh, this is our third Bible class um, thing, especially on the part of the Holy Spirit, specifically Glossolalia that is speaking in tongues. And I really thank God for this part. So as we come to the close today, I will I may I may rush over so many things, but I'm very, very sure at the end of this, the Lord must bless us. And I remember last week we said we have human tracks and we have a jolly tracks and we proved that uh, scripturally. And actually also we we look at the who should speak in tracks. Who should speak in tracks. And remember I said any, any, I did not say all, I said any child of God can speak in tongues. And I gave, I gave out scriptures that prove that, praise the name of Jesus. Now I want to submit that uh, to us this morning, that spiritual gifts, tongues included, may not be a measure of maturity. But the Bible says, and Paul taught the, the Corinthians, that don't be babies, don't be babies, don't be young ones in, in thinking. Mature up. Praise the name of Jesus. Mature up. But in evil, be young. Be babies when it comes to evil. But when it comes to the spiritual gifts, do not be babies. And I want to give us a brief, a brief exposition of chapter, chapter 12, chapter 13, and chapter 14 of the of First Corinthians. The reason why actually Paul wrote about the Holy Spirit in the three chapters is because of the confusion that was in the church. It was because of the division that was in the church. I still have that confusion today. And that's why the Bible says everything has been written for our learning. I want us to, to go to the, to the book of First Corinthians chapter 14. And I want us to read from verse 1 to around verse 13 so that we are able to determine the truth. So uh, people who are, okay, if you, if, you, if you probably you want to, okay, speaking in tongues, we cannot be able to measure you, we cannot be able to get you when you speak in tongues. But come and speak us to a human language, with a human language, we'll be able to know if you are grown or not. Because we will be able to understand you. Because when you speak in that, we will not be able to understand what you are saying. So God grant for that. Amen. If not for anybody, people, we want to be blessed. We cannot understand tongues. We cannot understand what you're saying. And you know, Paul was in, 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 in actually you, you realize in chapter 14, it, Paul was comparing two gifts, prophecy and tongues. And he was saying who was greater? Because the challenge in Corinthians, they were saying, who is greater? If you speak in tongues, you are greater than the one who prophesies. You see? So what if to them was like it's so important than the other? But Paul was showing them saying that there is no gift that's, you know. Chapter 14, that is 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 13. 
39 to 40, you will still get that one. Benefits of speaking in actually in tongues. Benefits. In 1 Corinthians 14, verse 2, the Bible says the one who speaks in tongues speaks mysteries. And that's why Paul was saying, like, pray that you may interpret. Why? You are speaking mysteries. So those who speak in tongues, continue speaking in tongues. Do not forbid speaking in tongues. But I ask and I challenge us today that we may pray the Lord to gift us with the gift of interpretation. Why? The things that we are speaking, the Bible says mystic. Mystic means things that are not known to human beings. Things that are not common. So those who speak in tongues, they are mystics. They are mystics actually. But I want to know that the day you will, the day you will have the gift of interpretation, brothers will be amazed at the kind of mysteries, the things we have been praying for. Praise the name of Jesus. So may we ask the Lord that He may give us, so that at least we should have people who can, when they speak in tongues, hey brother, this is what you can say, and it is possible. He can still supply that one. And it's also for education. It's also for education of the child. He has been proven throughout this chapter 14 that it is for education of a person and even of the church when there is actually an interpreter. Praise the name of Jesus. And when you read Romans chapter 8, verse 26 uh, to 27, the Bible tells us sometimes we may find ourselves so weak, but the Spirit comes to our aid. And he prays for us, even in word, with a lot of groanings, you know, in word that cannot be uttered by mere human language. Importance of speaking in tongues. Amen. Now, has miracles, has miracles ceased? That is one thing I want also to address. Has miracles ceased? Oh, me with Jesus, please, you have me. Me with Jesus, please, you have me. Kuna sema like, miracles, please, you have me. Kisa, kuna bitu kama hizo. I want to say, a big no. Let's go to John verse 14. Uh, chapter 14 verse 16. John, John chapter 14 verse 16. John chapter 14 verse 16. Look here. I want to answer that question. Do as miracles cease to be there. No. I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you. When? As long as the church has not been raptured, the Holy Spirit is there. And if the Holy Spirit is there, miracles, signs, and wonders are there. Means even to our generation. So miracles, signs, and wonders, they are still there. Now, another question. Do God angel of light and of darkness understand when we speak in tongues? A big yes. I want you to know the devil was not born yesterday. The devil was not born yesterday. In fact, when we were still ideas in the minds of God, the devil was there. Is that scripture? Yes. Go through Genesis. He's the serpent. You go through Revelation, the old serpent. He's the one. So he was there. So we the do, do he understand what he's speaking? Okay, he does. Yes, he understands. Rather, he understands. I want you to go to the book of Job, chapter 1, verse 6. Chapter 1, chapter 1 verse 6. You will understand. The Bible says, when the sons of God went to present themselves before the Lord, sons of God were angels. Angels. 
The Bible says, and even the devil went there. Satan went there. And the Lord was conversing with the devil. So, he understands. See, the devil was not a small thing. It's not a small thing. But the good thing, the Lord, has, the Lord Jesus overcame. So, we win also. How are signs? How are times assigned to non-believers? The Paul said, first, the first Corinthians chapter 14, verse 21, 22. I want us to see. He says, time is assigned to non-believers. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 21, through 22. Other times and other lips, I will speak to these people. And yet, for for all that. They will not hear me, says the Lord. Therefore, tongues are a sign, not to those who believe, but to unbelievers. But prophesying is not for unbelievers, but for those who believe. Acts chapter 2 from verse 5. You will discover the Galileans, Galileans speaking men. They spoke a language. They were only about 150. And they managed to spoke or to speak languages of people across the world, including Africans. Including Africans. And they went to, to hear what the guys were saying. Non believers from Africa. Non believers from Africa, from Egypt and Libya. They went to hear what they were saying. We can, we can read here so that we understand. And there, and there were Jews, that, they, and there were dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews, devout men from every nation under the heaven. Verse 6. And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together and were confused because everyone had them speaking in his own language. Galilean, and they even asked them, Hello, verse 7. Then they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Look! Are not all these who speak Galileans? Galileans speaking our language? Let's go to eight and at nine. Okay. And how is it that we hear each in our own language in which we were born? But the strength, that's what the Bible says. Men of strange lips. Strength that it is, I will speak to them. Let's go to tonight. Okay, help me now read this one. Let's go to past tense. Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya. A journey to say visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes. Men of strange languages, I'll speak to them, even about Jews. Strength based gifts. And yet I will show you a more excellent way. Which is this excellent way? Now I want us to go to chapter 13. Now we have been dealing with chapter 12 and chapter 14. Now I want us to see. The greatest of all the gifts. And I want you to know that chapter 30, some of the things that have been highlighted there are things that were there in the church of Corinth. So if you find something that is there that I've been mentioning is in you, you need to work it out.
you are lesser. I'm better. He showed that life does not come with that answer. It's not empty of anybody. Life. The greatest of all. That's why even mentioned, if I have a gift, I'm not like, I'm nothing. Love. You does not despise anybody. People speak in tongues. Two verse, three and four. As the Spirit gave them utterance. The last verse, the, the last thing, my friend is ah. Uh, okay, why yet some people don't, have not yet received gifts of the Holy Spirit and probably be looking for it? Why? You have to subtract yourself and know the type of life you'll be living. <coughs> that is the first thing. When you read the first Corinthians chapter, actually, chapter 3, verse 16, the Bible says, Okay, the Bible says, Don't you know that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit? So change yourself. Uh, Acts, the book of Acts. Actually, chapter, chapter 2, uh, verse that, uh, uh, 38, the Bible says, he told them, Peter told them, okay, they asked Peter, what shall we do? After Peter came to them and they were cut in the heart, what shall we do? He told them, repent. Repent and be baptized into the name of the Lord, and the Holy Spirit will come upon you. So check the kind of life you believe. Two, fullness of pain. Fullness of pain. I want to tell you that this morning that God does not do things prematurely. God will never grow impatient. He spoke through joy and joy died. But still, the Lord followed up to fulfill the gift of okay, the, 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 the promise of the Holy Spirit. So, so many years. Why? The Lord does not grow impatient. He does not do things prematurely. He does things when the fullness of time has come. He told them, Acts chapter 1, verse 4. Wait in Jerusalem. Don't leave. Wait. So I want to challenge you. Probably you've been looking for gifts of the Holy Spirit. I want to tell you, Time. Wait in the upper room as they did. Not doing nothing, but doing something. Wait in the upper room, and the fullness of time shall come to pass. Don't be on pressure. Don't pressurize yourself. You know, when sometimes you run the race of another person, two things may happen. One, you may be slow. The second, you may run too fast, and you may pant and die because of too much pressure. Walk at your pace. <laughs> Amen. Let's go back to the Lord.
sin is coming from Yahweh. Hallelujah. Hope of being bounty. To be specific. A place called Maweku in Karachuan. Hallelujah. I'm blessed to be here. I want to thank God for the leadership. Uh, for inviting me to come and share with you the one of the living God. It's a great privilege and a great honor that I'm not taking for granted. Amen. Talking about redemption power, the word redemption comes from the root word redeem. Root word is redeem. Redeem, the Oxford Dictionary, means to buy back or to purchase back. To regain possession. Or something by payment of a stipulated price. The other meaning is to repurchase. So when you talk about to redeem, it simply means to repurchase, to buy back, to regain possession of something that you have lost. If you don't get the understanding of what to redeem means, then we lose the story. And will not be able to experience the power that is redemption. That's why I'm here to share with you a story that you've heard continually since you're born. The redemption story. From what you have read in this scripture, Genesis chapter 1, 26 to 28. We get the story of man. You and I before the fall. That creation story. Verse 26 clearly puts it. God himself, the gate of the universe, said, Let us make man in our image. After our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth. Man was created in God's image and after his likeness. 27 repeats the same and says, So God created man in his own image. The image of God created he him. And here in the, the Bible asks, the male and the female, he created them. Hmm. Verse 28. After creation of man, God spoke to man. God spoke to man. The Bible says, and God blessed him. That the position of man before the fall. Man in the image of God. In the after the likeness of God, the Bible says, God blessed man. He blessed man. <laughs> and God said unto them, after blessing them, the Lord spoke. And he said, for this, one, Fruitful. 
To bring fruitful means bring to that thing. And that's not just consigned to the biological performance of man. To be productive, it goes more than giving birth to children. To be pro productive means whichever place God places you, He expects you to be productive. He expects you to be fruitful. <coughs> so He blessed man and saying, Where 
formation. <coughs> the Bible says heaven belongs to God. But the earth he gave to man. When God created the earth, he had man in mind. That's why in the first man, God placed him on earth and not in heaven. God gave him what to do on earth. How to live beside man for the other things. But God gave man the authority and the right to rule and exercise dominion over all things that will be found of God. Praise be to the living God. Yeah, as God said, 
You shall not eat of everything of the garden. That's what I say. Did he tell you that? And a woman said the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, this is the base of the garden. God has said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it. Let's read that. He added the fashion to the instruction. God never spoke of that. Thank you, Jesus. You shall not eat of it. Neither shall you touch it. Lest you die. <coughs> and the serpent said, And the woman shall not surely die. No. It's not telling you the truth. Whether you do it, you shall not surely die. And he has continued that same story today. You shall be done. Whatever you do, no matter how you walk, no matter how you behave, you shall be done. Praise be to Jesus. Amen. You and I, you know what I Now, some people think that Adam was very fast. Some people did talk me a song that is Adam was far when he came back, he did take the fruit. And I had that story from a song I was taught somewhere down the line that Adam was far. Adam was there, but he was there. Remember, God had commanded, the instruction was to the man. And that's why after the fall, God did not question him first. Yes, he was the captain. God approached Adam. Adam, what has happened? Where are you? No, no one. At the man. I always tell the married couples that I'll tell you something in your family, in your marriage, in your house. If you're a man, you're the one responsible. God comes to you. Not to you. It's you. It's you. The God will ask questions. Why are children not being told? Why? Why they hunger? Why they? Hunger? Lack of food in the house, why is people not dress up right? <laughs> it's a man! Not a woman! Hallelujah! Amen. So God directed his pressure to Adam. Not to Praise be to the living God. Amen. Let men arise and take the right position in their families. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. May God raise you to be a good father, a good husband, a man who the house. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. But then the blessing started. You know the story? This is not something new to you. Most of us have heard this story. We've been told since we were in Sunday school. We've had it quite long enough. I just want to thank God that even today it will not be asked for me to repeat it to you. It is a story that will be repeated until we go home. The creation of man, the nature of power, we'll be sharing briefly on the creation of man, the fall of man, and redemption. 
Can you just show the scripture so that you may have a reading? Because I have my good old Bible with me, I'll be reading, and you also have the projection up there. This is uh, the projection is New King James Version. This is the old King James Version. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fall of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Verse 27 says, So God created man in his own image. The image of God created him, made and female, created him then. Verse 28, and God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Remember the guy when the woman was brought to, to him? You know the things he said. He has some such beautiful words. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. But when things are gone heaven, the plague begins. Not your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Now after the fall, God was all knowing, was always the omniscient. Was it caught by surprise by, by what happened in the Garden of Eden? No! It's an alpha domain. He knows the end from the beginning. You don't know you are tomorrow, but God knows your tomorrow. Five years down the line, you don't know where you will be, but God Almighty knows where you will be. Ah, let's give him praise in the house. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I love this God. Out of his love and of his plan, the redemption story begins. Remember, man was dropped out of the garden of Eden. Actually, the root word, the Hebrew word for Eden, you look at it, it talks about God's presence. Amen. Amen. The same meaning of God's presence. So God put man in his presence. The Bible says God visits Adam and Eve every day to have fellowship with him. But after the fall, man lost this friendship and fellowship. The Bible says, in Genesis chapter 3, verse 34, he says, So he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword he turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Man was driven out of the presence of God. And to make sure that man does not have, go back to the garden of Eden, the Bible, talk, the Bible says, and God placed. Cherubims with living souls to keep man from reaching the tree of life. He was driven out of his presence. And so Adam was driven out of God's presence. But beloved, before that something happened in verse 21, let's go back. Verse 21, the Genesis 3, The Bible says, And to Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skin and clothing. Remember, after the fall, the Bible said they, they were naked. They loved the glory of God. And so God came. 
You have fellowship with them. They were nowhere to be seen. God had to call them. Adam went. Not that God did not know what had happened. Or was not seeing him. Adam went. And he began his stories. And we will continue those stories today when God is really looking for us. He's all saying, Lord, here I am. He's like, I heard you when you were coming. So I hit myself. A simple question of location, where are you? Lord, here I am. <laughs> Today, if you ask, Kevin, where are you? God 
is not a man to lie. They lied. The fellowship was broken. And so physical death came later. Because man now did not have the life of God in him. Praise the living God. Physical death now came later. He said to us, When we sin, the Bible says we are dead. The witness of sin is not dead. When Adam sinned, he died. But for sin to be atoned, there was need for sacrifice. Hallelujah. Can you get the Leviticus uh, 70? Verse 11. Why blood? Why? Why blood? Leviticus 70. It's a 
original title from God. From the good friendship and from the blessings, Adam lost the dominion that he was given at the first reign. Because there is no way you can rule, you can exercise the authority of dominion over creation unless you are reconciled unto God. Today is speaking of the living God. So it's a prayer from God that is number one. Number two, sin makes us feel guilty. Sin will make you feel guilty. That's what I'm talking to believers. Hallelujah. Amen. People are not believers, they are called not guilty. The Bible says their conscience is dead. Hallelujah. What does it mean? To the believer in the house, sin will make you feel guilty. Remember what happened to Adam? He went and he. That was his task. Stories about you know the times are coming, you know, still preparing for the cuts, you know, this and this and that and that. So I'll set up, you know, <laughs> excuse after excuse. We cannot support the excuses. Did you hear that? The believers in how no excuses, it's not this for God. Amen. Remember the cross was 
was a, the Roman way of dealing with criminals. And Jesus was not the first person to be crucified. It was the Roman way of dealing with criminals. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So the cross alone without the blood of Jesus Christ is empty. It is nothing. It can be empty. Let me 
The Bible talks about there's life in the blood. There's life in the blood. And it's what can be given for the atonement for our souls. Praise the Lord. And that's why in the old covenant, God is given the Levitical priesthood and gave Israel the command on how their sins can be forgiven. That was the Ashadu of what to come. And that is what eventually came in the New Testament. We sent Jesus Christ to come and die for us on the cross. Share His precious blood to redeem us. So when we are talking about natural power, maybe we are talking about the power that is the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You are going inside it with the devil. 